Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today I'm going to show you how I made this spark collecting plasma table for about 150 bucks. Check it out. All right, so the basis of this project uh, is off of this store bought plasma cutting table that I got on Amazon. This is made by a company called Jegs, J E G S. Um, and I happen to just be looking around for a plasma cutting table after I got my new Lincoln Tomahawk 1000 and I came across this. It's $106 on Amazon with free shipping. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Now, a lot of people have videos making plasma cutting tables. Basically, it's a steel table with slats that come out and you can replace and it's through through the bottom um, and so your plasma sparks go through and you can cut without marring up a solid table. Now, you could easily build this, but for $106, I priced out the material. I couldn't get this material, cut it, uh, paint it, bolt it together for that number. So I thought that was a really reasonable price. Now the table is great, but when you're cutting with it, sparks shoot straight through the bottom, um, which can be a little problematic, especially in a shop like mine where I have so many things. There's flammable stuff everywhere, and I like to do plasma cutting stuff outside, but even there you've got leaves and things that can catch on fire. So. I went up into SketchUp and I designed this triangular collector that's made out of basically half of a sheet of 20 gauge sheet metal. Now I'm going to put plans down in the description on uh, the dimensions to cut your sheet metal to build it to fit this table if you want to do this same project. Uh, so let's get right into it. All right, so I started out by using my Centipede work platform. This is a four by eight accordion style platform. It's great for cutting up sheet goods. Now, I'm used to using a uh, pink rigid foam to cut up plywood, so I thought I'd give it a try with some other insulating foam and the sheet metal. This is 20 gauge, and I'm laying out on a full four by eight sheet in sort of the back room of my shop where I have a lot of room to walk around. I'm using a drywall square here to just sort of follow the lines that I have on that sheet that I showed before. And I'm going to put a link to download the PDF of these dimensions in the description of this video. Basically, you're going to find your centers and measure up from the center and then connect your diagonals and then cut it out. Uh, this is an Evolution metal cutting circular saw that Evolution was kind enough to send over to the shop. And I actually haven't had an opportunity to use it yet. Now, it's designed to cut a lot thicker material. I did cut a little bit of 3 8 with it when I first got it, but it works nice to cut this thin stuff too. And using the foam actually made it really, really easy to just cut straight down on it. And I had the blade just dipping down into the foam. Now I sort of cheaped out and I bought this white insulating foam and I really should have bought the pink stuff. It's a lot denser. The white was like really flexible and not great and all to save like $5. So if you're going to do this, buy some pink foam. Don't buy this white foam. It's not as good. So once I had two of my pieces cut out, I went over to the table and I just laid them out to see how they looked. Oh, it's going to be perfect. Once I kind of thought that things were going to be okay, I went back over to the sheet metal and I just traced those out, uh, laid them out as tight as I could. And I do have them laid out on the drawing that's in the description. But if you can get them tighter on your piece, then obviously go ahead and do it. Save as much material as you can. I had originally drawn this with like a green Sharpie and it didn't work so I switched over to a black one and you'll see I'm looking on the right side of the blade as I'm cutting just to make sure my line is nice and straight and this saw is way overpowered for something like this so it makes quick and easy work um, and what's nice is it doesn't leave so much dust in the shop like a grinder would. It leaves these little chips and it's pretty easy to just clean them up with a broom. Um, when you cut with an angle grinder you're turning all that metal into a fine dust that can really get all over your shop. So you can see when I'm cutting those little straights, all those sparks are just getting everywhere and there's metal dust everywhere now. With all four of those pieces cut, I can throw them onto the little table and roll it into the metal shop to do some grinding. Now I'm using my 2x72 grinder. This is a Broadback Ironworks grinder. I've been really happy with this thing. It's relatively new to my shop and it flips sideways and goes vertical like that. And what I like about it is the size of this platen that comes with it. You can see I'm kind of like sweeping across the platen with the sheet metal as I deburr it. Now the, the edge was really sharp from the circular saw, so I wanted to make sure it was clean and that's a lot easier than a grinder. 
Moving over to the welder, I've got my Lincoln MP140. This is a smaller welder, it's 110 volt, and it's good for this thin sheet metal. I used a little chart inside the door to set it to 20 gauge, and I was actually really pleasantly surprised with this. Um, I'm used to burning through thin sheet metal when I use some of the larger machines, which is why I decided to use the smaller one this time, and I actually didn't really burn through at all. Um, I'm just using some little flexible magnets. These I got on Amazon, they're like a strong hand tools magnet and they're good for kind of applications like this and I'm just taking the welder and I'm doing little tack welds as I go and I'm assembling this thing just one piece at a time and I'm making sure that my sort of collector base is squared up on the corners and then I'm flexing it as I move it down to just sort of make it tight and keep everything uh, really really just tight so there are less air gaps. I'm not gonna go ahead and weld the entire seam. It didn't really seem necessary and I'm not trying to collect water or anything. It's really just to direct sparks. So as I'm welding, I'm repositioning and these little tiny tack welds are good because they're pretty flexible. So you can see as I get to this final side, I throw two magnets on it and I basically just force the metal into place as I go down the edge. I throw a couple extra tacks on this side and I'm using my left hand down there to just make sure everything's nice and tight. I go back and throw a couple more little spot welds on it once I have the whole four sides welded together. And it actually was easier than I thought it was gonna be to weld together. You can see the way I designed this thing, it sits over the sides of the table. Um, now, once I knew that it was gonna fit, I threw a couple of larger welds on the inside and just was careful again, like I said, not to give it too much heat and burn through. I wanted it to you know, look nice. Now, a little bit about the table. Um, like I said, it's like 106 bucks on Amazon, 105 bucks, and it's just bolts together. So I didn't really feel it was necessary to show assembling it. It's really, really easy. And then once you have it, you know, making a collector like this is really not that bad. Um, I have a sheet metal brake, so I could have bent this edge with that, but I figured to make this a little more user-friendly, I'm just using a little sheet metal pliers. You could buy these anywhere. You could get them at Harbor Freight. Um, and I'm just marking point to point on this and bending it. And what you're going to see in a second is that this is actually a little undersized, and I changed the drawings in the description to actually make it a little, a little more user-friendly, but... Um, eventually you're going to want about a two and a half inch flat section and the purpose is so that it can hang over the side and then you can use zip screws to screw it into the side of the table. Now I'm just dry fitting it on top and I thought this was a good little method. I stretched it over the top and then I used a rubber mallet and then eventually just a little mini sledgehammer to form it around the table itself uh, so that when I went and flipped the table over I knew it was going to fit and I wasn't going to be wrestling with it sort of checking and figuring out how I'm going to attach this. There were just some little corners I clipped off with a little sheet metal shear. And then I took out all these little slats. You can see here how easy it is to remove these. Um, and I want to say these are like 10 gauge slats. So it's, it's pretty easy. You could just go ahead and get new ones. I know Jegs, uh, the people that make this table, sell new ones. Uh, and they're easy to get. But now you're going to see sort of where I went wrong on my design of this collector. All right, so I made a little mistake here. I didn't account for this piece of steel when I did my drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run over to the sheet metal shear, and I'm just going to shear up some little two and a half inch pieces. But on the drawings that I'll put in the link in the description, I'll have already adjusted the sheet metal so that it's correct to actually get you around the corner uh, with this extra length. I totally did not look down there, so I probably should have flipped this over before I did it, but it's a quick and easy fix. I'm also going to extend these leaves a little bit so that they hit, um, because I do want to kind of try to close this gap as much as I can to mitigate any sparks from getting out. So uh, let's shear up some sheet metal, and I'll be back in a snap. A few moments later. So I went over and I just sheared up some straight plates. And then I'm going to just use those little magnets again to just hold them in place. Now, obviously, if you're doing this for the first time, you'd be skipping this step. Um, I totally didn't realize that that piece of steel on the bottom was going to be in my way. So what I did on the actual plans was I extended the straights on the longer pieces that run the length of the piece. And then I actually wound up making the hole that the sparks will eventually go through a little bit larger thus raising the bottom of the collector up which will make it a little easier to fit a bucket under that was another thing i sort of noticed as i went so 
Don't worry if you want to make this. You will only have to weld the four sides together. Uh, I'm just tacking these in place. And since I know they're already kind of hanging around the edge, since I'm upside down, it, everything's going to work out fine. I grabbed some clamps now and I just clamped the collector to the bottom of the table. Uh, and I throw four clamps on there so that I can flip it over. The other thing you're going to notice is that on this table, I have these big plastic wheels. Now I have a gravel driveway at my shop and I like to plasma cut outside. So the plastic wheels are there so I can roll around on that gravel and make this thing sort of all terrain. Uh, those are about 40 bucks and I'll throw a link to those down in the description as well. I'm using number 12 by one self tapping screws to attach this thing to the top. Now I could have just welded it to the top, but I thought it'd be good to be able to take it off if I ever wanted to change it or anything. Um, so using the screws just makes life a little easier. These are kind of a pain to put in the first time, but after that they'll go in and out really easily. Dropping the slats back in to make sure all my screws are in clearance and none of them are going to hit. What's nice about these two is you can flip them over if they get scoured up on top. You can see mine are a little banged up, but not so bad. I made a little wooden plate for the bottom and then covered that in sheet metal too. Uh, this is obviously totally optional. You could just have a bucket on the floor if you're not going to roll it around or you could just use wood or metal, whatever you have. And then I'm throwing a steel bucket down there uh, that was once for paint, but I've washed it out and it's nice and clean. And then my welder fits right underneath it, right next to it. Now this collector will also protect the welder from getting covered in sparks too. Now to give it a test, I'm plugging this in. I've got a 50 amp outlet for it. And then I've hooked my air compressor up. This is a Tomahawk 1000. It's a pretty robust plasma cutter from Lincoln Electric. This thing will actually sever inch and a quarter solid plate. But right now I'm just cutting some 3 8 and you can see all those sparks just go right down into the bucket. And that's exactly what I wanted. Um, you saw in that clip in the beginning, sparks fly everywhere when you cut with a plasma cutter. And also a lot of the smoke gets, you know, sucked down into the table too, because there's air pushing through the torch. So overall, I'm super happy with how this thing came out. It does exactly what I want and it was really cheap. All right, that about does it for this video. Um, this is a pretty straightforward project. Uh, obviously, if you're building this, you have a plasma cutter, and if you have a plasma cutter, chances are you have a welder. So the $150 price point is really based around having those things. Now, that being said, as you saw, and as I mentioned, I put wheels on mine. Those cost about an extra 40 bucks, and I have a gravel driveway, and moving things on little casters is obviously really difficult on gravel, so these big solid rubber wheels are great, and they roll around on the gravel just fine. I'll throw a link to those in the description as well. Thank you to Lincoln Electric for giving me this Tomahawk 1000 to use. This thing is amazing. It'll cut inch and a quarter plate. Uh, I've already cut a bunch of one inch with it. It handled this 3 8 plate like it was nothing. And I'm going to do a whole video about the Tomahawk 1000 and show you some of the features uh, probably next week. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, pretty simple project. Obviously, like I said, I messed up my dimensions when I cut my original piece of sheet metal. The plans that are down in the description are already corrected so that they work perfectly. Um, and I also raised the collector up a tiny bit because I realized that the bucket I have had already been cut to slide underneath it. So the sheet metal on the bottom is obviously optional. And honestly, this is a pretty simple project that you could either cut the sheet metal with your torch with a circular saw like I did or a shear if you have access to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below and don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, share it with friends and subscribe to my channel uh, for more stuff like this. If you have any questions that you want to ask me or see what I'm doing on a daily basis, you can follow me here at Make Everything Shop on Instagram. Um, I post pretty much every day on my story. I shared you know, some process shots of this and sort of what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.